Good morning again. This is Bronson's By Any Means Necessary Fantasy Football Talk for Friday, September 30th. Um, we're coming into October now, so it's uh, the NBA season starts October 19th. We're less than three weeks away from the start of the NBA season, so maybe it's time to start thinking fancy basketball. Maybe uh, maybe tomorrow, because I'm trying to get... Uh, did I say it's Friday again? It's Thursday. Why do I keep thinking it's Friday? It's Thursday, September 30th. Tomorrow's October 1st. Friday, October 1st. Maybe tomorrow, uh, if I can successfully get through all of my spikes and yikes for week four in fantasy football today, I can start talking some fantasy basketball. I know I, I know fantasy basketball, like, <sighs> it's a little less boring, a little, a little less uh, st strategic, a little just more paying attention. You just got to, if you if you guys hurt, move them to the injured list, pick up somebody who's not hurt, who's going to play some games. Just set your lineup on a daily basis, and you'll probably make the playoffs. Uh, basketball just... A lot less strategic, but we could talk. Um, I didn't really do this last year. I didn't really focus on the the uh, you know. I didn't do the draft Sherpa stuff with um, fancy basketball last year, and uh, so maybe this year I'm gonna try to do that. Even though I'm kind of really focusing on dynasty basketball this year, I don't know how many redraft basketball leagues I'm gonna do uh, moving into the future because I just, it, like I. Like I said, I, I I'm just I get bored with regular redraft fantasy basketball. It's just not exciting for me. Uh, I I would like to find a way for it to be more exciting for me because basketball has always been my favorite sport to watch. And um, uh, and I want to be able to make it more exciting. If I can make it more exciting for me, I can make it more exciting for you and to talk about and to listen to me talk about and all that stuff. So I, I'm. And try and find a way to make my fancy basketball stuff this year more engaging. But for now, let's focus on the football. I got tight end spikes and yikes for you for week four. It's just, you know, I'm just not a whole lot of research going into this. It's just mostly just kind of my hunches. We're still early in the year, we're still, still figuring things out with defenses and matchups and stuff. But Tight ends that I don't like this week. Four. I got four for you. Starting with Rob Gronkowski. It's not that I don't like Gronk. He's having an amazing year. Uh, he's a five for the week. The problem is he's hurt. I'm not sure he's going to play. Um, in fact, I think he's probably going to miss this game. Um, going back to New England um, against the Patriots. I don't I don't think he's particularly interested really in going back to New England and facing Bill Belichick, honestly. Uh, I think that's a part of the, part of the thing. I don't think he's going to push himself to play this game, but um, even if he does play, I'm not sure how productive he's going to be. I consider Rob Gronkowski a risky play this week. Top five, definitely not top five play for me. I would probably have him on the bench. I haven't been flexing Gronk um, the last couple of weeks in, in leagues where I have him, and, but this week I will not be. Flexing girl, I will be flexing uh, most likely a running back. Um, next, no fans at seven. No fans didn't have had him. at week one. He looked really good, and I, and I was really high on no fan. I'm still high on no fan. I still like no fan as a tight end because let's face it, tight ends not great. No fan is still one of the better options out there, but he hasn't looked super great the last couple of weeks. And I really think Baltimore, I think Denver's offense as a whole is going to struggle, um, especially the passing game. It's going to struggle against Baltimore. I don't like any of the pass catchers for Denver this week. Uh, starting with no fan here at tight end. He's ranked at tight end seven. I've got him outside the top ten as well. Next, John U. Smith at 13. I, I, I don't understand why um, he's still considered the top 15 tight end. I don't know why the Patriots spent his money on two tight ends. Um, they could have spent, you know, they paid them both very well. Uh, I could have just paid one of them really well and focused on that one tight end and then spent that money on other areas uh, where they need some help because now neither one of the tight ends looked great and I'm not sure if unless one of them gets hurt which I'm not rooting for I don't want those guys to get hurt I, li I like them a lot as, as players I would like them to be the primary focus at their position group on their team 
Uh, so hopefully something happens. Hopefully one of them is traded or something. But as for now, I, I want no part of New England's tight ends. Um, neither one of them has separated themselves. Neither one of them has looked good. <sighs> they should be on your bench probably on a weekly basis. The only reason you should be needing them, if you need them at all, is when you when your starting tight end has a bye week. So, uh, and Robert Tanyan at 14. Look, Tanyan sucks. I'm not even I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. Uh, I hate the Packers, so uh, there's no reason to sugarcoat it. Tanya sucks. Tanya suck, has sucked his whole career. The only reason he looked good last year, I'm, I want to break the secret for you, is because Aaron Rodgers was pissed off and wanted to prove a point that he could still play. Okay. Any other previous year of his career, Aaron Rodgers has not. Um, He's ignored, practically ignored the tight end. Uh, why that changed last year, honestly don't know. But uh, Aaron Rodgers is, <laughs> is a very petty guy. <laughs> he was a very motivated guy last year to show that he doesn't suck <laughs> anymore. He did that, and he used Robert Tonyan as a tool to do that. But now that he has uh, reestablished himself, he doesn't care anymore he's not going to throw the ball to Robert Tonian anymore so Robert Tonian does not need to be rostered in in any fancy league um until until he actually does if he goes out there and does something I will uh I don't know uh, I'm not gonna do anything but <laughs> I'm, I'm really confident that Robert Tonian is not going to be a factor in fantasy football this year so move on from Robert Tonian find somebody else pick up Dawson Knox or Tyler Conklin or Dalton Schultz. Those guys are going to be more of a factor than Robert Tanyan. Tight ends I like this week. Kyle Pitts had a really bad week last week. Um, I think I think he's going to be motivated. Um, the Falcons, Arthur Smith, the coach, has already been on record saying that, that a game like that will not happen again. So my educated guess, hypothesis, is that Kyle Pitts is going to be the focus of the offense this week. Um, Kyle Pitts should be a top five tight end just based on volume targets. Hopefully, he can actually produce with the volume and the targets that he gets. A couple of guys outside the top 10 who I think could play their way into the top 10 this week. Dallas Goddard. I think this is going to be a Dallas Goddard week. We've been waiting all season for a Dallas Goddard week. Um, I think the Chiefs are going to have to, Eagles are going to have to keep up with that high octane offense somehow. Dallas Goddard is going to be heavily involved. I think, again, it's going to be a big week for Dallas Goddard. I think you should start Dallas Goddard, especially if you got Rob Gronkowski or Robert Tanyan or Noah Fant. Um, I wouldn't roll with Goddard or those guys. Dawson Knox, at least he's ranked this time. He's at 19. Last week, for whatever inexplicable reason, he was not even in the top 25. At least ESPN put him in the top 20 this week. I still think he's better than that. He's proven that he's a, he's a top 15 tight end this year. Josh Allen is looking for him uh, in the red zone, which is very important for a tight end to be fancy relevant, to get touchdowns. If Dawson Knox can continue to get touchdowns, continue to get looks in the red zone, he's going to be a top 10 tight end by the end of the year. Dawson Knox, still highly underrated. I think he gets another touchdown against the Texans. I would pick him up and start him if I have Rob Gronkowski, Robert Tanyan, Noah Fant, you know, the theme that I've been preaching this whole video. And lastly, a little bit out of the box here, but Pat Fryer moves the rookie of for Pittsburgh. He's ranked at 25. Um, I, I, I don't know. There's no reason to believe that this is going to be a big week for him. But with the, with the way the line, the offensive line has been struggling in Pittsburgh, uh, short dump offs are going to be the, the way the, the Steelers move the chains. Um, Najee Harris has been the huge benefit beneficiary of that in the last couple of weeks but I think this week still gonna be Najee Harris no reason not to you know I'm not saying any disparaging things about Najee Harris but I think if this is gonna be a, a week where they start to establish Pat Frymouth more in the passing game he was a, a high draft pick for them they really believe in him a lot um I think Frymouth is gonna get I wouldn't say a lot of targets, but he's enough targets to be a factor. And I have a hunch that he's going to get in the end zone. He's going to move him off the 25 line into the top 20, possibly top 15 tight ends. I'm not saying he needs to start him, 
but uh, if you want to get a week ahead on the curve, on the waiver wire um, mess, I'd get Pat, Pat Frymouth now and not wait till after Sunday uh, when you might have to, you know, fight to the death for some Pat Frymouth in the waivers. So that's it. That's, that's my tight ends. I'll get to my quarterbacks a little later, but I'm going to take a little bit of a break. This is my second video in about an hour. Um, I feel like I kind of need maybe need a nap. I only slept about three hours yesterday. I tried to go to bed early. I just did not work out. I hope I can get to bed early today because tomorrow I go back to work for both my jobs. So, um, yeah, I'm going to need the rest. Although I have noticed that I really only get tired on my days off because I'm, I just, I don't, I don't do anything. I'm not like physically active. I'm not staying. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, shoot. I don't know, but when I'm at work, I don't get tired, but it's like when I sit down for like a lunch break or, or the end of the day, or I come home from work, that's when I start to crash. But like, as long as I'm doing something, moving around, working, staying busy, I don't get tired. So uh, I just, I guess I just need to get out and just do something today, right? Maybe that's yesterday, I just, I was yesterday was such a lazy day. I didn't do anything, but all right, I'm gonna end this now. We're at about 11 and a half minutes. I haven't had any storage problems lately. That's good. Probably because I haven't taken a whole lot of pictures. Um, we're going to see how that works when I go to go on my next trip in a couple of weeks. Uh, I may not be able to record any videos while I'm out there, but we'll see. Thanks so much for watching. For those of you who do, um, good luck. Do a lot of I hope that my information is, is semi helpful. And uh, blessings to you. Have a blessed day. Good luck with your lineups. Peace, love, and nacho fries.